Yeah. Um, this is a bit weird, actually, because I actually go to UWA. I'm still at UWA at the moment. And um, usually, I'm in this lecture theatre quite a lot, but usually I'm up the back trying to concentrate and not fall asleep. So it's a bit weird being down the front and talking to people. Um, so basically what I'm going to be talking about is RoboGirls. Um, has anyone heard of RoboGirls before? You guys, down the back. Awesome. Um, so basically what we are is we're an international not-for-profit organisation that tries to get more girls into studying STEM um, subjects when they get to university, so science, technology, engineering and maths. Mainly the sciences, it's more math-based sciences, so uh, chemistry and physics. And basically we do that by travelling around to schools in metro and rural areas and perform free robotics and engineering workshops for them. But I'll go into that a little bit later. Um, a little bit more about us. This is Marita Cheng. Has anyone heard of her? Yes. So she is the founder of RoboGirls um, and she actually won the Young Australian of the Year Award in 2012 for um, starting RoboGirls. I've touched the trophy, it's quite nice. Um, <laughs> anyway, she, decided, she started RoboGirls in 2008 when she moved from Cairns to Melbourne to study engineering and she thought that when she would start studying in Melbourne there'd be all of these girls in her class and there were only five girls in a class of 50 um, studying mechatronics engineering with her, which I think is actually pretty good odds. In my um, mech-eng class, there's about 20 girls in a class of like 250, 300. So if you get bored during a lecture, it becomes spot the girl. Um, so it started off with one chapter in Melbourne and it's grown over the past years to all over the world. So there's, about, there's actually more chapters in um, North America at the moment, I think. They're having their um, annual meeting in Toronto, I think, this year in early January. Um, we've got chapters in the UK and obviously in Australia um, and Tokyo. Um, but what I want to talk to you guys about is why we actually need groups like RoboGirls. Um, so these are just some stats that I have about women studying STEM subjects at university. Um, so as you can see, in 2011, the number of engineers that retired were around 70,000 and about 45,000, I think it is, graduate of engineers graduated. Um, and the number of women actually studying at university is about 14% in 2011 and the number of them actually in the industry is around 10%. Um, so as you can see, there's a massive discrepancy between the number of men studying engineering and the number of women studying engineering. Um, so why don't girls take STEM subjects at university? These are the three things that I've come across um, as to why I think girls don't study and well, studies have actually um, talked about why girls don't take up engineering and maths at university. So the first one is that they don't actually know what engineering is and to be fair, I didn't know what engineering was when I started university. I just knew that I liked physics and physics was kind of had something to do with engineering and that's why I did it. Um, most of them, as you can see, these um, uh, little handwritten things are stuff that we've gotten from students that we've performed workshops for. So we get them to fill out a survey at the end and one of the questions is, what did you know about engineering before the workshop? And we ask them this question when we turn up. We go, what do you think engineering is? And most of the time it's nothing or it's they build things or they work on cars, which as a mechanical engineer really annoys me. Um, I know how an engine works. I can't change a tire in my car, I'm useless. So work on cars is completely wrong. Um, so, and the reason I think this is, is partly because it's not portrayed in the media. You go and watch TV and there are a thousand cop shows, 90% of them are CSI and it's different offshoots. There are doctor's shows, there are lawyer's shows and you get to see what their job is. It's in the media, it's in your face, you know what's going on. Pretty much the, there's very rarely any engineers on television. The one that springs to my mind straight away is Howard Wolowitz from The Big Bang Theory. And I have a bit of a gripe with The Big Bang Theory because it's basically, Someone's nodding, yeah. It's not, Howard isn't a positive light for engineers. When engineers get shown on TV, they're the nerdy guy, nerdy guy, not nerdy girl. They're the nerdy guy 
who is socially awkward and can't relate to people. And to me, I think the Big Bang Theory is basically promoting that. You're not laughing with the nerds, you're laughing at them the whole time. Exactly. <laughs> and, <laughs> I was, I, like when I first watched it, I laughed because I can't, like some of the science stuff they were talking about, I got it and I got why it was funny. And then as you watch more episodes, you just realise that you're supposed to be seeing it from Penny's perspective and you're supposed to be laughing because uh, they're saying some science stuff. So anyway, um, so engineers aren't actually portrayed in a positive light in the media if they actually get mentioned as an engineer at all. Um, one of, I actually ruined Iron Man 3 for myself. I went and saw it in gold class, I had a great time until that point in the movie where the little kid goes, so what, are you like a mechanic? And he says yes, no. Iron Man is not a mechanic, Iron Man is an electrical engineer. It just, I ruined the movie for myself. I sat there for the rest of the movie just going, no, no. <laughs> so, and this is my big problem. If they stood there and went, he went, no, actually, tiny child, I am an engineer. The kid would have gone, oh, what's that? And it would have been like 20 seconds of the plot. But Hollywood just doesn't like to chuck in an engineer because it's not sexy and nobody knows what it is. Um, uh, and also, the other big problem is that engineers rarely become teachers, um, which makes sense because if you've spent five years of your life struggling and dying throughout university, you're not going to then go and become a teacher. You're going to try and stick to this, this job as much as possible to get your money's worth. Um, so they don't become teachers. So then when kids do science in school, they make things like solar cars, they do things with like battery power, they build things, they use design and stuff like that, and they don't actually make that jump between science and engineering because the teachers don't make that jump between science and engineering. You do chemistry in school and you go, I can be a chemist. You do biology and they go, I can use this for nursing, I can use this for being a doctor, but you don't build a solar car when you're in year six and go, I can be an engineer. You go, I really liked building that solar car, science is cool. Um, so, moving on, uh, engineering is not a job for women. I don't know how many times I've walked into a school and gone, I do engineering, and the girls are like, why would you do that? That's a boy's job. Even saying it to older gentlemen, <laughs> when I've, because I work in, not, I'm, you're lovely, you, see, you gave me that look. <laughs> <laughs> you seem wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I work in hospitality when I'm not studying and in a hotel. So you get talking to people and a couple of times they've gone, so what are you studying? And I go, oh, engineering. And they go, oh, why are you studying that? And I gloss over it because I'm guessing they're not trying to be, they're not trying to be moving in that direction. But I do sit there and wonder if I was a boy, would they go, why are you studying that? Um, and that's the same with girls, the girls that we come to. They go, we don't want to do stuff with robotics, that's for boys. Why is it for boys? Nothing has ever said that it's just for boys. And actually, some of the girls are a lot better at it than some of the boys we've had in these classes. Um, and due to this wrong perception of girls getting turned off by the fact that it's a, a really hands-on, tools-based, get-dirty kind of job, I've come from work, vacation work, at an engineering firm and I'm not getting dirty at all. Um, so they have this perception and they get turned off because most girls, going into general stereotypes here, which I don't really like, most girls do not like to get dirty. We like to be clean and nice and pretty. So they think that it's this tool-based job and they get turned off, they don't want to do it. And unfortunately, it also is partly due to the conditioning at a young age. We buy these to boys Tonka trucks, we give them robotics, we give girls dolls, we give them, um, we give them those, like Barbies, those sort of toys. Um, and really that's partly, partly how we're steering um, our children. And it's something that people aren't even, come in, come join us. Um, <laughs> I'm enjoying pretending to be one of my lecturers, so. <laughs> Um, I had a lecture kick someone out because they were 10 minutes late. And then I've had another one who were like, oh, so you're here for anthropology? And they're just like, what? The? <laughs> um, anyway, back on topic. Sorry. Uh, that's okay. Um, 
about, when I was in first year of uni, we had a garage sale. Um, and I went through all of my stuff, like all of my old toys, all of my old things, to get rid of this garage sale. And as I was looking through it, I realized that most of my old books were science books, like astronomy and like different sorts of animals, things about the world. And a lot of my old toys were puzzles and Lego. And I turned to my mum and I went, why did you buy this stuff for me? She's like, because you liked it. This is what you wanted. This is what you wanted to do. And I honestly believe that it's because she was giving me science books and she was giving me puzzles and giving me Lego is what drove me into this sort of career, the problem solving and the thinking about science. Um, a final thing is a self-perception of their lack of mathematical ability and encouraged not to undertake higher maths and sciences. Um, it's actually been proven that your belief in your ability to do what is required to succeed is actually a more accurate predictor of your future career. So basically what that means is that if you are on, the, if two people are on the same level in a subject, but one person believes that they are better at it, they will get better test marks just because of their own self-perception in what they can do. Um, and this is a big thing for females. If we believe that we aren't, and I do this all the time, if you think you're not really good at it, you kind of don't try a little bit and you're like, oh, I don't really want to. Um, females um, place a heavier emphasis on being prepared for the mathematical aspect of engineering rather than males. Um, these are all come from studies that have been done. I have sources if people want to check it. Um, which I guess is a bit, which I guess is true because um, when you're leaving high school, um, the maths is a big aspect of engineering, maybe not quite so much once you get into the workforce, it's more of a design and a problem solving area of it. But it is a big aspect of your toolbox of how to be a good engineer. And a lot of girls, if they're not taking higher maths and if they're not taking higher sciences, you're basically missing out a core aspect of actually getting into engineering. Okay, move a bit quicker. Um, and there's this other thing called stereotype threat. Uh, which causes, can cause girls to give worse test marks. So there was a study done in, I think it was Germany, that had a class of, um, two classes of 50 girls, I think it was, who sat a math, and they sat a maths, before they each sat a maths test, one class was told that there were gender differences in the test results, so oh, boys do better at maths than girls. And in the other class, they weren't told anything. In the class that was told something, I think it was at least half the girls performed worse on it than the class that wasn't told anything. So it's just an indication of how when you're told, particularly for females, when you're told that you aren't, that you're not good at something because you're a woman, it can decrease your chances of getting stuff right, getting the test results right. Um, okay, so a little bit more about Robo Girls. So I said that we perform free robotics and engineering workshops at schools. So um, some of these robots here are, are the display robots that we have. So I built all of this. This was a fun Saturday. Um, this is our little electric guitar. Um, we've got, ooh, I'm breaking stuff. Take this one out. Uh, this is our puppy. <laughs> and our catapult. Um, I'd just like to mention that two of these I kind of went, I'm bored of programming anymore. I'll leave it for kids to fix. And they actually did. Oh, I've just broken it. Um, so the catapult, one of the girls actually fixed it for me. And on the puppy, one of the girls actually programmed it for me because I couldn't be bothered. So I was like, you do it. Um, so robotics workshops, we generally lose a little car, like you can see in the photo there. And we teach them how to use it with um, Lego Mindstorm software. Has anyone? Had anything to do with Lego NXT robots before? <laughs> Down the back on the camera. Um, they're really, really good for kids. And I'm just going to show you why. So basically, this is a little programming module here. There's pretty much no code involved at all, which is fantastic for me because I hate coding. Um, I'm at the wrong conference. Um, <laughs> Um, so basically, as you can see here, it's just got little blocks and you just click on it and you drag it. 
and it comes up with a whole bunch of different things that you can do down the bottom. It's really good for kids because it's really visual and that's what they need. The funniest thing that I've had a parent come up to me and go, so is this the sort of coding that you do at university? I'm like, no, of course not. Somebody wrote the code to make this thing work. <laughs> that's what you study at university. So as you, yeah, it's really visual and you can do loops. You've got um, switches which can do sensors. So you've got uh, your touch sensors, sound sensors, light sensors, um, and color sensors on an ultrasonic one. So it's, there's a whole bunch of stuff you can do on this. But, and you can actually use MATLAB and Mathematica to actually code the robots as well if you're super keen. Um, but because most of our workshops are generally for we try and go to primary schools, so about year five and up, because we like to brainwash them when they're young. So um, it's really good for them, because I've said it's really visual, and they can um, really think about what they're doing, and it's great for the problem-solving aspect of it. Um, so I'll just go back to this. So Robo Girls Perth, um, in August 2012-2013, which is our 10 minutes, okay, which is our year, we taught 1,481 girls, which was the most taught in the Asia Pacific region of about, I think it's like nine chapters um, in Australia and um, Japan. Um, we went on four rural trips. So this is the little map of how far we traveled. I just like looking at it because it's all pretty and there's lines going everywhere. Um, so we traveled over 8,000 kilometers and we went to places like Margaret River, Kalgoorlie, the Kimberley, Bridgetown, Management, Geraldton and Capel and there's a whole bunch of other ones that I didn't put in there. Um, so we have three different types of workshops that we do. Um, we've got our robotics workshop which basically starts off with some very simple programming, just getting the robot to move and then it moves on to some more advanced stuff with sensors, maybe doing an obstacle course with an ultrasonic or some touch sensors or doing line following. Um, our engineering workshops, um, because I'm a big believer in the fact that um, RoboGirl shouldn't be just about robotics, it's about engineering, because engineering is a, a lot more than just robotics and just coding. Um, so our engineering workshops, we've done stuff like building a bridge out of popsicle sticks, which is boring. Um, and then we've done other things where they, we've given them Lego and they've had to build a chassis with the wheels and then we've given them other materials and they've had to build like a mast with a sail and then we've had races using a fan to steer them. Um, and egg drops, we've get, we give them a whole bunch of materials and they have to make a capsule around the egg to stop it from dropping when you drop it from. It's usually me standing on the table going like this because I'm the tallest person in the group. Um, and they're really good. It gets kids thinking about it, problem solving, um, and really actually understanding what engineering is, not just a man fixing a car. Um, and then we do a women in engineering presentation as well because a lot of them don't actually... You ask them, like, name a famous scientist, and they can all name Isaac Newton, they can all name um, Einstein, um, and we're lucky sometimes if we get Marie Curie, which I think is a bit of a shame considering she won two Nobel Prizes. Um, so we do a women in engineering presentation just to let them know that women are actually a part of this, um, this profession. Um, and these are some of the feedback that we've gotten back from them. Um, so I love it so much. I think I will do it when I grow up. Um, my favourite one is, thank you for making my dad's work actually fun. Um, <laughs> What's that um, I know that engineers are awesome and are really useful without them, well, I don't know what would happen. <laughs> so, I think that's because I told that girl that engineers are a part of everything in your life, so I think she kind of just took that to the extreme. Um, so I'll just finish up now. So basically what RoboGirls does is we go out into classrooms, provide these workshops, we're showing them that engineers aren't a, a 50-year-old person who fixes a car, they can be women, they don't have to be a nerdy stereotype. I try not to tell them that I'm really into Doctor Who and Star Trek and stuff like that, <laughs> just not that part. Um, yeah, I know. <laughs> My friend the other day was like, can I, what kind of Doctor Who stuff do you need? We're going to need dressing up as doctors. And I'm like, well, I've got this, I've got this, I've got this. Anyway. Um, See, my 10-year-old would just love you all. <laughs> I high-five kids in the class who mentioned Doctor Who. I'm like, yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah, so, and we're providing these role models for girls to know that there are young women out there doing engineering. And it's just, that's 
for females, it's actually been proven that the way that they look at their careers, they look at their parents, and then they look at role models that they um, have seen about where they want to go with their career. And I think that's pretty much it for me. Oh, yeah, that was just in case I can plug in, I think. So, yeah. So, does anyone have any questions? Yes? I mean, I guess it's way too after hours because my son joined the robotics team. Yeah. And I was like, oh, so that's interesting, I don't look at that. And they use uh, the VEX robotics, which is a closed source, but very commonly used in a lot of schools, and physically high schools, and they compete overseas. Yeah. So there's, it's the fact that everyone uses it, and there's lots of competitions which motivates the kids that they get back with these bots, and they have tasks they have to do, like moving balls around mm -hmm. schools. And so it's quite good. And their biggest problem but then, because I walked around, there's no girls in your class. And they said, and the teacher's actually female, and one well, other teacher was male, but really, really supportive. Yeah. And I worked with them, and I said, well, what does it take to get, to get girls in this class? And they said, well, we don't know, we don't know what to do, and how to do it. So I've worked with the school since, and I fundraised and raised about three and a half grand, and got more robots, kits, and they could bring more people in, and they specifically set up a girls' team, and we found that setting up the girls team by themselves so separate to the boys and they didn't feel yeah. so the boys wouldn't override what they were saying and, and yeah. they and felt so they felt really confident because yeah. you know, it's like Nakano basically it's like this. And because girls these young girls believe that boys should be better at this, yeah. they take a step back right. and they let the bo they let the boy take control. Yeah. The thing is when they got yeah. better at it, um, what we've done is we've merged them into drink groups as they more confident and they know what to do. Yeah. But also, we're talking to the boys and educating them just in passing. You know, like uh, one guy might take over from a girl and start doing something for her, and I'll have to say, hey, you know, that's actually quite, you know, it's, you know, she can actually do it quite well herself. Do you realise that you're doing this? And, and, you know, if you could just not do that, and they're really, really good about it, really open and accepting. And this is teenage kids. Yeah. And they're really, really good with it, so it's been quite good. Yeah, it sounds like you guys are doing it. Yes, I mean, they haven't realised until we put it out that they're doing it. And the thing is, like, although we do try and have female-only classes for that reason that if we do have boys in there, sometimes the girls will take a step back or they won't try as hard because the boys are in there. But I think it is good that we have some co-ed classes, but it's not just the girls who need to realise that, it's the boys as well, because it's this perception has been put into the boys' mind as well that girls, engineering is not a job for girls as well. So I think what you guys have done is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Do you what where are you in Africa? No, I'm from New Zealand. We actually have a club that's trying to start in Auckland. Uh, I'm a Cambridge that's two hours there. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm in a small town, but as a plus on the plus side, everyone knows of me and, and, and I know you and I can work with schools. I can get you in touch with wherever you're employable really easily. Yeah. Then yeah. we'll look out. Yeah. Yes. Why don't you Sorry, why don't I like programming? Yeah. Okay, so in my first programming class at uni, I'm actually going to take a programming unit next semester. My first programming class in uni, they, um, they taught us how to program in 45 minutes and it was 85 slides in 45 minutes and that was all the programming we ever got taught. <laughs> <laughs> and since then, it's more of just been like a spite and it's like, I'm not going to learn this because you were terrible. So, but I'm going back, I'm going back, I'm doing um, an actual computer science unit next semester because it's a really useful skill that I really need to learn. So, um, hopefully you'll Yeah. Programming <laughs> um, on this is like, in, on Mindstorms is fantastic because it's drop and drag. It was just, because coding is a different language and it was just, it was like trying to learn like Italian or French and like I just didn't get it. That was pretty much it. Once you get it, you get it though. And you kind of relate to a lot of languages. Yeah. And I'd spend like half of, like an hour looking at it going, why is this not working? And it would be because I didn't put a semicolon on the end. And I would just drop it. It doesn't go away though. It doesn't stop. Yeah. I'm not trying to teach you. 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 I'm not trying Oh, so they were trying to teach uh, programming and programming. Programming, programming. So we have sequence, we have selection, we have iteration, thank you. Now we have programming, so you yeah. see the data. And it was like, Do tomorrow. he was going, hang on, I should go back. He was going through the slides like that. <laughs> like, <laughs> not even kidding. I, I had like a pen in my camera, I'm like, 
I've heard that this is kind of painful. I've heard this. I've heard that this is a lot better. I don't know. I have a lot of Java, which manual is painful. Okay. Everyone's going to keep it. If you want to process a raise, pepper. If you want to do anything else, <laughs> <laughs> if you want to learn how to write code that writes code that returns functions that return functions, you can go. My my first experience is with Java actually. I don't I don't really you know, I might uh, Yeah, that's fine. I don't really want my to work. Yeah, it's great the fact we got star factory found for code. You're not encouraging us. <laughs> Right. Seriously, I've heard, I've heard 